control, seen only in the context of American history, Cornwallis was a loser. But the chances are that he died proud of his life's accomplishments, because India became the jewel in the British crown, the country's most precious colonial possession, and the key to its dominance around the world. With the vast resources of the subcontinent on tap, was the second governor general of India, and the one who really consulted by the British, the East India Company gradually emerging as the top. Burton soon decreed that whenever an Indian ruler died without a male heir, the British crown inherited his territory. In this way, Great Britain gradually took direct control of many states. Then others, it installed a proxy who ruled in accordance with British wishes and interests. India became a patchwork of states, ruled directly or indirectly by the British, the East India Company gradually emerging as the top power in the subcontinent and the true successor of the Mughals. Great Britain lost its North American colonies at almost exactly the same time that it was gaining control of India. General Cornwallis, well known to American history buffs as the man whom George Washington beat at Yorktown, was the second governor general of India and the one who really consolidated British control there. Seen only in the context of American history, Cornwallis was a loser. But the chances are that he died proud of his life's accomplishments because India became the jewel in the British crown the country's most precious colonial possession and the key to its dominance around the world. With the vast resources of the subcontinent on tap, Great Britain could finance further colonial adventures in Africa and elsewhere around the globe. Naturally, therefore, it was very touchy about any threats to its jewel. And just such a threat did begin to emerge as the 18th century gave way to the 19th the threat posed by an expanding Russia. When the Turks conquered Constantinople, they plunged Orthodox Christianity into a crisis. Constantinople had been the new Rome and the heart of the Orthodox Christian world. Without a heart, how could the faith live on? The Grand Duke of Moscow stepped into the breach. This man, Ivan III, declared his capital the third Rome the new heart of Orthodox Christianity. His grandson, Ivan the Terrible, took on the title of Caesar, thereby claiming the imperial tradition of ancient Rome. In Russian, of course, his title was pronounced Tsar. Between 1682 and 1725, one of the Tsars, Peter the Great, built a formidable army and began carving out an empire east of Moscow. By 1762, when Catherine the Great of the Romanov dynasty came to power, this empire extended way beyond the Caspian Sea, beyond the Ural Mountains even, deep into Siberia, stretching across all the lands north of India, Persia, Mesopotamia, and Asia Minor. Catherine soon gave notice that Russia would not only push east, it might push south as well. Catherine's armies engaged the Ottomans in a bid to take the Black Sea coast and drive the Turks out of Europe. Fighting the Ottomans was all very well, but the British could not have the Russians coming south into Persia, or worse, down into the mountains inhabited by the Afghan tribes, for that would put the Russians within striking distance of the jewel in the British crown. For many centuries, in fact, the Hindu Kush mountains and the Persian highlands had served as a staging area for conquest of India. British leaders decided they must block Russian advances everywhere along this front. And so the Great Game began. The Great Game was the term invented by British novelist Rudyard Kipling for the struggle between Great Britain and Russia to control the territory stretching between the Russian Empire in the north and the British Empire in the south. Everything that had once been Safavid Persia, everything that is now Afghanistan, much of what is now Pakistan, and all the territories covered by the former Soviet Republics of Turkmenistan.
Afghanistan, Uzbekistan, Kyrgyzstan, and Tajikistan, all of this was the arena in which the great game was played.